Close your eyes, focus on your breath. Gather the mind right here in at the breath. Don't let it go wandering out without permission. If there's something you have to think about, okay, you can send your thoughts out, but otherwise just stay right here. Exercise some restraint over your senses. We're remembering a John Swat's birthday, which was today. He would have been, what, 93 years old this year. And one of his favorite teachings was on restraint, how we tend to think something and it comes right out of our mouths, or think about doing something and it just comes right out in our actions. He says, anybody can think these things. The question is having a sense of when is the right time and the right place, and that takes training. And that's the ability to exercise restraint saves you a lot of trouble in life. So the principle of restraint is when you're looking, ask yourself why you're looking and what's coming about as a result of your looking. In other words, what's your purpose? If you're out looking for greed, looking for aversion, looking for delusion, that's what you're going to find, wherever you look. If you're looking for mindfulness and discernment, that's what you find as well. So it all comes down to your intention. So sometimes we think about restraint, meaning that you have to keep your eyes down, you don't look at anything. That's not the case. If you're going to look, but you can look at anything, but have an intention in the looking. And be clear about what that intention is. And if you've realized the intention is not skillful, okay, then you don't look. Or train yourself to look in another way. The same with what you say. Ask yourself before you say something, why am I saying this? What am I ho hoping to get as a result here? Think about cause and effect when you're speaking, and don't just say whatever comes up in your mind, or whatever you feel like saying. It's this principle of restraint that keeps, makes, it, it <clears throat> makes it possible for us to live together, and also makes it possible for us not to cause a lot of stress and suffering for ourselves. So don't think of it as being a confining kind of teaching. It's actually a very clear kind of teaching, because most of the times when we look and listen, we're just going on our impulses without stopping to ask, well, why is this happening? Which means there's a huge blind spot right there. That's confining, because that forces us into doing unskillful things. But with restraint, you're opening up your mind to see your intentions. So it's not confining at all. Things are opening up inside, and you're beginning to understand yourself a lot better. And at the same time, your manners as viewed on the outside, are a lot more inspiring. We're not practicing for the sake of inspiring other people, but it's good to have that effect as you practice. So think about this principle of restraint, and every time you look and listen and every time you speak, ask yourself, why am I doing this? What are the results that are coming about? How can I do this more skillfully? It may prevent you from being really spontaneous, but then you know, spont spontaneity is not always a good thing. You've got to realize you're a human being. Animals can act spontaneously, but you're a human being. You, you should know better, realizing that things have causes and effects, and always taking that into consideration, whatever you do. <laughs>